And uh, he says, um, excuse me, yeah, I, I was wondering if I could get a, get a macchiato and uh, goo. One of those, one of those cookies would be really nice. Uh, just make sure that there's no nuts in them. I'm allergic. And the, the girl says, oh, of course, sure. And she'll get, ring up his order. And um, Inky, who's on, perched on his uh, shoulder, uh, looks around and notices Molly and Bullet. And uh, Inky will then fly over there. And uh, Keith will turn towards Inky. He he says, "Not too far now, Inky." Ink, and uh, he's he's gonna be paying for whatever he's uh, paying for. And um, Inky f- hops over and lands on the table next to Molly. And and uh, he says, "Well, hello, hello. Fancy meeting you both here." I think it would have been the case where when Bullet heard you know Keith call out Inky, he would have looked, seen Keith. Looked back at the table, and Inky was then perched there. Yes, <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> yes. So with that sudden appearance, you know, he he definitely jumped. You know, started like, oh, hey, uh, how how is it going? Things have been going very well. How have you been, b- b- Bullet? I'm, the, uh, I'm Inky good. Says. I'm mm, Molly's not so good. I'm I'm okay. Oh no. Well, what's wrong with the poor dear? I don't know. She's never really acted this way before. Molly, the um, Murkrow uh, uh, looks towards your direction with a very concerned look on its face as it tilts its head. And it and then it it calls out to you, Murkrow, Murkrow! <laughs> she, <clears throat> Molly, will, Molly will smile kind of weakly at uh, Inky and she'll, she'll say, well, Merc Row to you too. <laughs> she'll, and she'll, she'll reach over and kind of stroke her if she'll allow it. She'll, she'll nuzzle into it. And then uh, Inky, Inky will turn back to Bullet and says, uh, hopefully whatever she's drinking was helping. She does seem to be a little better, so that's a relief. But earlier she was moving weird and making these odd noises and then she started to cry and i don't know i didn't like it oh no um well it looks like she's feeling a little better she says as she sort of takes her wing and she sort of pats you <laughs> pats you on the uh shoulder there whatever could be conceived as a shoulder right. <laughs> at the touch he'll, he'll feel a little hotter and you know look away to molly instead Oh, Molly's Molly's watching, kind of slightly amused, <laughs> but she's not going to say anything. She's just watching. Mm. Inky says, "So, uh, it looks like, other than that, things have toned down for you since well, since the bizarre fainting spell or unconscious spell that things happened with your friends." Well, not really. I mean, like, since then, we've been on a few secret missions, and we went Ooh. into the Pokemon, or the PC, and we fought, like, these Pokemon that totally shouldn't have existed. Wow. Oh, you... oh and look! And it'll, like, slap his forehead. You were awake in the PC? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was totally bizarre. I didn't know that it could happen, but we, have, we met this nice computer lady. Well, I mean, I, I guess Molly knows her. And uh, her name's Madison. I know her too, I guess. And yeah, it was it was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I, I'm sure Keith would love to write about something like that. Maybe I could help him write something about that. Mm, well, I don't think he could go into the PC. This has nothing to do with those missing Pokemon in the PC, is it? Oh, yeah, no, that's exactly what it has to do with. So... Do you know who did it? Do you know who has been stealing all of the Pokemon or kidnapping all of the Pokemon? Well, no one was kidnapping them. They were just kind of going on their own. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Why would they do that? Well, you see, they have these own, like, Pokemon cities for each type, you know? So that people don't have to feel like... Unfortunately, it turns out that some people, some Pokemon, don't like poison types that much. So, things like that. You know, they don't have to feel in danger all the time. Oh, I I suppose that, I suppose that makes sense. You don't feel that way, though, right? 
She chuckles a bit and says, Oh no, with our line of work, we can't afford to have such prejudices. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be stupid. Uh, well, she, she, she says, although if I do see a purloin crossing my path, I tend to try to steer away a little bit. Uh, but I don't think that counts. <laughs> He'll seem a little confused so he doesn't understand, you know, that connection, but he'll just he'll just nod a little. <laughs> Try to be polite. I did, 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 you know, I have I have plenty of plenty of um purloin friends. I have a lot of purloin <laughs> friends. We just, you know, when we walk, we just we just walk in parallel to each other, not cross perpendicular to each other. That that's all. Well, it seems like that would avoid accidents. That makes sense. Oh, well, yes, accidents and several years of bad luck and things of that nature, yes. <laughs> it's be... better for the both of us, trust me. Okay. So, uh, okay, I guess you would know better. So, you look, there's some, um, there's something different about you since last I saw you. Uh, I see that you uh, got yourself a tattoo on your forehead? It looks like it looks very it looks very nice yeah he can't help but grin when that's brought up and he'll nod and like look up a little bit toward it obviously can't see it but yeah i got this in the pc actually you know keith was writing an article the other day about uh about these new fancy schmancy uh tattoos for pokemon i just never knew if it would be something that i could that i could necessarily i guess get away with no, I think you could pull it off. Do you think so? Yeah. Uh, what would you recommend for me, then? Hmm, I'm like cock his head a little bit and, you know, look her up and down. And, um, just say, you know, I, I could see, like, like a nice star right on your chest. A star? Oh, that, that actually sounds lovely. Right? I... It'd be, it would be like looking at the night sky, but just in your feathers. That's... That's very poetic. Yes. And and stars, I should also say, stars also tend to be a very good omen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially the shooting ones. <sighs> if I had one on my chest, I would look like a shooting star across the sky. Oh, that it's would be lovely. It's then. <laughs> well, I might be a little scared going into a, such a tattoo parlor to get something done. Uh... Maybe we could go, you could come with me so that I wouldn't be as scared. Again, he'll tense a little and start to feel a little warmer, but just, uh, sure. I, I mean, as, as long as Molly doesn't need me for anything. Oh, well, she's welcome to come too. Maybe she can get a tattoo as well. <laughs> he'll glance at Molly and just cock his head a little bit again and then slowly nod once more as though in approval. <laughs> You you could have ta you could have matching tattoos. We could. <laughs> she could get a moon on her forehead. I think that would actually look lovely. The two of you would be so adorable. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll see if we can sometime then. It'll be at this point that Keith arrives uh, at the table, and he says, "Hey, Yinky." Uh, what's, uh, who's this? Oh, I remember you. <laughs> Little oh, wave of um... this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, have we met? Oh, sorry. Well, um, I don't think, I think we might have met a little bit in passing. Uh, the last time I saw you, though, you were kind of asleep. But I remember this one. <laughs> oh, boy, do I remember this one. He says, pointing at Bullet. Um, the last time I saw wait. you, you were asleep. Hmm. Wait, 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 where did, where did you see me asleep? Because, uh, you know, without context, that sounds a little creepy. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, you were, you were unconscious at an apartment a few weeks ago, I think. And I was trying to get you guys some help and call the police. And uh, you guys were taken away and I never quite found out what happened to you. And uh, bullet. But it looks like, go ahead. I was just going to say Bullet will nod to confirm his story. But uh, it yeah. looks like you're awake now. Um, well, yeah. Um, so, so you, you were in, you were in that apartment. How, 
how did you get there? Oh, well, uh, he says, Inky came over with your Pokemon, I think. I think it was your Pokemon. And, uh, d well, he was really nice, <laughs> nice, nice enough to fly me over to you because it seemed like you were in, in trouble of some sort. Oh. And you as looks... well. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 some, and some other Pokemon, a Grimer, too. Oh. Oh, and she she looks at Bullet and she says, "Oh, Bullet, I, wow, I I never knew you you tried so hard to to help us." He'll puff out his chest a bit. <laughs> she she rubs his wings and she'll she'll say, "Wow, thanks, buddy. Of course, you you help me all the time, but <laughs> thanks especially for that." And she she looks at Keith and she says, "Wow, um, so so." You saw all of that? Like, I, we, none of us have any idea what happened while we were unconscious. Next thing we knew, we were just awake in the hospital. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really see much other than you and a few other people unconscious on the floor. I couldn't wake you up, so I called the Jennies and they took you to the hospital. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Well, well... Thanks, thanks for your help. Um, uh, kind of, I, I'm sure it must have been weird having having Bullet show up and fly you somewhere. What was even weirder, though? Do you do you, are you are you familiar with with um? There was a there was a Fennekin, uh, there that uh, it was he was acting really weird, and and I was uh, wondering if you knew whose Fennekin that was. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I I I know the Fennekin. Um, how how? I think he put me to sleep. <laughs> oh, the the Fennekin put you to sleep? Yeah, I don't know what I why he put me to sleep. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like it helped very much. Well, that's that's really odd. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to make of that. But um, okay. Um. Well, <laughs> that all happened weeks ago, though, so kind of water under the bridge by this point. But, hmm, what a strange thing to hear. All right, well, well good to see that you're you're much better. Hi. Um, so uh, I guess I'll uh, see you around then. And <clears throat> Molly will Molly will reach out to shake his hand, and she'll say, "Oh, by the way, um, uh." Your Pokemon and my Pokemon seem to get along pretty well. And she kind of gives him a wink. <laughs> oh, really? No. Well, Inky is a very friendly Pokemon. She tends to, she tends to, uh, I would say, she tends to make friends relatively easily. It's particularly with other flying Pokemon, I think. Well, gives them um, <clears throat> Oh, she, she and Bullet are very good friends. I can tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me and me and and Inky, we've been together. We've been a pair for very long. Uh, she was given to me by uh, she was given to me by uh, my parents. Whew, I miss them though. Oh, you. <clears throat> oh, what what happened to them? If you don't mind me asking. My, oh, my parents. Oh, well, ah, uh, it's it's not really a very happy story. I don't really want to make you feel sad or anything. Well, I have a bit of a sad story myself. That's why I'm. That's why I'm trying to calm myself down with this tea. But if you oh. don't want to, but if you don't want to share it, it's all right. Oh no, it's fine. I mean, honestly, it's a relatively common story. My uh, my family, well, they they live in Johto. My my parents and my and my brother actually they live in Johto. Oh. Or. Really. Lived in Johto. Yeah, really. Mm, yeah. I'm I'm so sorry to hear that. And it was it, it was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, I've uh, I've I've sort of had a chance to grieve and deal with it, like like many people during that time when it happened. Well, it's a. Uh, 
Although, you know, even today, I guess it feels a little... Eh, it feels a little weird just not knowing really what, like, for sure what happened. I know that feeling. Um, you know, I, 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 actually have fam I actually have family in Johto myself. Oh. Oh. I'm really sorry. I, 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 I didn't mean to bring up um, bad memories. Well, I, I, I kind of forced the question on you, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Oh, um, no problem. So I guess, um, yeah, it's, it sucks. <laughs> it definitely does. But just try to try to take things one day at a time, right? Yeah, one day at a time. I uh, actually wanted to uh, do a report. I've been trying to get permission to do a report on Johto for quite a while, but uh, my uh, the uh, the uh, newspaper hasn't really given me permission to be able to go out past the borders into Johto. I, I was I wanted to try to be the very first the very first reporter to actually go into Johto and successfully get some information since we don't really know much. But to be honest, I, I don't know if a lot of that is mostly so I could also try to look for my family and find out the truth of it too. Well, I can, I can certainly understand wanting to find out about your family. Um, uh, hypothetically, just hypothetically. Sure. If, if uh, some people, if some people were able to go over the over the border and able to go into Johto, would you want to come along? Like, let's say in a few days, maybe. Hypothetically, of course. Oh, oh well, yeah. If you have a way to sneak me in, I mean, nobody at the newspaper has to know necessarily. <clears throat> Hmm. If you think you could be able to sneak me in, uh, you gotta be careful though, because the rangers, they keep the borders pretty tight. I'll keep that in mind. Um, say, uh, could, could I have your phone number? Oh yeah, of course. Um, oh, let's see, let me, do I have any more cards left? Yeah, yes I do. And, um, the, actually, um, Inky was right ahead of him. Inky actually pulls out a card from his pocket. And he says, oh, yeah, here you go. Yeah, you can just call my number here and, uh, and uh, just, just let me know. And um, look, look, um, if, if, if you uh, ever want to talk about it, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from. And, you know, it might be a little bit helpful. Mm. Molly, Molly will nod at that and she'll say, thanks. Um, it... It, it gets hard sometimes, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, I know what you mean. It's, uh, sometimes you feel guilty, you know? I, I, I wanted to go move over here to, to make something of myself, and I wanted to make my, my parents proud. And, um, well, after what happened happened, I guess I kind of feel that survivor's guilt a little bit. <clears throat> Molly will actually gag a little bit. <coughs> and she says, sorry, sorry. <coughs> and she she says, yeah, guilt, guilt is a good word, I think. <coughs> yeah. <Excuse me. coughs> well, I will rub her back. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> anyway. Got cut, good job. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I uh, well, I had a lot of guilt for a very long time, but then I realized that I don't think that my parents or my brother would want me to feel guilty for the rest of my life. I, I think they would want me to try to live my life. You know, I I'd like to believe that they would be happy that I'm happy and be happy that I'm safe, and I don't know. It took me a long time to come to terms with that, I guess. I'm still sort of struggling with it from time to time, too. I don't really talk very much about it every now and then. But, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is feeling guilty is, doesn't really help them or help yourself. It just makes things worse. 
So, you know, do what you need to do to grieve, which I know is easier said than done. But um, beating yourself, beating yourself up over it constantly, it, it 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 doesn't help. It only makes, I guess, it only makes whatever happened to them in vain, because you're not able to keep going. Molly will, Molly will take this in and she'll nod a little bit and she'll, she'll kind of whisper, you, you son, you remind me of Dr. Pearl. Who? Uh, a, a, a psychiatrist that, that I see sometimes. Um, oh. she, she, uh, she, she helped me a lot. She helped me deal with a lot. And, um, and you know, you, what you're saying makes a lot of sense too. So thank you oh. for that, really. Well. Uh, gosh, nobody's ever said that I sound like a psychiatrist. <laughs> well, how about that? Well, well, thanks. And <clears throat> Molly, Molly will, will smile and she'll still, still kind of weakly smile and she'll say, well, but th thank you. Thank you for everything you said. Um, I think it might have helped a little bit. It's, it, it takes time though. Well. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course it does. Totally understand. Well, like I said, if you ever need anything or you need to talk, just just let me know. Sure thing. Um, thanks, thanks for the card. Uh, I might be in contact soon. Okay. Just one question, though. Yeah? If we are making our way over to Johto one day, hypothetically... Hypothetically, do we, of course. Do we necessarily have to fly there? Well, um, that would be the fastest way, and I would prefer to get the- I'm sure I would prefer to get there quickly, hypothetically. Okay. If we did fly, hypothetically, would we necessarily have to go super fast? And at that, Bola will look at Inky and just say, For the record, I'd like to see the rangers try to catch me. Uh, Inky- <laughs> Inky sort of beams a little bit and says, oh, I'm sure you could outfly any of those rangers. <laughs> Molly says, well, uh, I would be the one, I would be the run ri riding on this big guy, along with whoever could handle uh, his speed. But I don't know. I mean, if you wanted to tag along on a, on a slower flying Pokemon, that's perfectly fine. Hypothetically, of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. I just, you know, I have issues, just issues, problems up in high altitudes, especially at fast speeds. So, yeah. <laughs> she says, well, um, she taps the cup and she says, well, you know, uh, this could could probably help with any hypothetical air sickness you might have. It certainly helped me. Good point. Good point. <clears throat> well, I have to get back to work. Well, it was nice talking to you again, Molly. Nice to talk to you, too. And she looks at the card. I, I can't remember. Out of character. Did he mention his name? Keith Carmel, yes. It's on the card, yes. It's on the card, yeah. But, so she's going to look yeah. at it and she's going to say, she's going to say, nice to meet you, Keith. Keith, Keith, nice to meet you. Oh, he chuckles. Oh, it's Keith. The, 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 the Keith. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had something in my throat. <clears> throat> oh, no problem. He smiles. Uh, and, uh, and he'll leave. Mm -hmm. Uh... And as he leaves, he notices that Inky's still at the table. And he says, Oh, uh, Inky! Inky! And Inky turns around and says, ah, Well, we'll th think about the, 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 the tattoo, uh, the, ta the tutu idea. I think, that, um, I think that that would be fun. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, I'll see you again some other time. I'll see you again soon, she says as she smiles. And then she flies off. Molly will look at Bullet and she'll say, you Casanova. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really know what that means, but with context in her tone, you know, he'll still like grin and like roll his eyes. Or, or ironically, Casanova, even though. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, because Cassie yeah. doesn't Cassie, flirt. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> would like to a temple um, of new with Remy. You're going to go to the Temple of Mew with Remy. All right. 
So let me describe the temple of Mew. Um, so let me start with Mew. Mew is, while, while um, Arceus is known as the father figure of all Pokemon, Mew is actually, can be classically uh, seen as the mother figure of all Pokemon. So a lot of her domain has to do with things that are nurturing. Um, for those of you who've played D&D before, I think Yandala is like the god of the hearth or something along those lines. Yandala, I think, is a motherly figure type of god. And that's sort of how I'm picturing Mew. Mew, being, Mew is referred to as a she, and she is a motherly-like god. And um, I guess it's the closest to... I, I would say that it's a it's like a cross between Christianity, Buddhism kind of religion. Very benevolent religion. It's all about service to your good man um, without all of the judging. I think I think the mantra is you know just be just be cool with each other. Just be nice to each other and you know treat others like you want to be treated. Golden rule. It's your very you know typical, like benev neutral good type of god. Yes, thank you. Church of Mew. Yes, thank you. And um, the temple itself is actually probably the largest temple, the actually largest religious uh, facility in Saffron. Um, it's very well decorated. Um, and the sisters, uh, there are sisters and brothers um, in the order of Mew. And they are dressed in um, pink, but not like hot pink. We're talking more like salmon peach, like a light salmon peach um, robes. Um, and I think I think that the uh, sisters do have like a headdress, but it looks it's not like the full on full-on headdress it's more like um i don't know if any of you guys saw sister act back in the day but uh the really young i forgot what her name was but the really young sister in that one that could sing really 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 well how she sort of like had you know what i'm talking about so they have that but um it's in the peach or pinkish color and um the brothers look more like like the franciscan brothers in catholics in like the Catholic Church, but their robes, like I said, are have that pink color. And so right now, um, there is currently a service that is taking place. Um, you know, there's a sister right now who is giving a sermon of some of some sort. And uh, I think today's sermon, I don't know if you're gonna, are you gonna actually attend the service or are you just going to be hanging around the temple? Um, she'll definitely like enter the temple and do like a um, very like respectful, like yeah, when you come in, do a prayer and like do like a bless, and then walk in and wait until the service is over before she approaches any people. Okay, we're gonna say that the topic of the sermon today is about. Um, well, I mean, I think that the, the topic for today is about service, and more specifically. Um, putting in extra effort to um, help others help you. Um, help others help you because quite often we have a tendency to close ourselves and there are people who care about you who really, you know, love you but, but they don't always know. It's very difficult sometimes for them to know that that you need their help. And sometimes you don't realize you need help or you don't want to admit that you need help. And therefore you keep a lot of things bottled up inside and you don't express it. So so that's the theme is like help others help you because sometimes it's not super obvious. So um, During the when- You have like written out by, by a side, so you can listen. Um. Um, Remy, like, He's Remy reaction during the yeah, so, I don't know if Remy is, is Remy. Yeah, and the, most of the congregation are humans, but there are Pokemon that are sitting in the pews as well. There are some Pokemon sitting in the pews listening. 
Okay. I, I will say that may, maybe Noir will sense something coming from Remy. Um, you'll see you'll see a tulip. Tulip. The image of a tulip. Okay. There'll be a part in the uh, after the sermon. There'll be um, something that is similar to communion. But it doesn't symbolize it doesn't symbolize the body and the blood of Christ. This is more symbolizing um, a I guess a appreciation of life and um, living in the moment and having a meal, breaking bread with others. Family is a very big theme in the Temple of Mew. So the idea is that during the ceremony, there's a there's a moment where we're breaking bread with each other and enjoying each other, enjoying the community of each other. And um, before the breaking of the bread, there is what normally happens, at least in um, a lot of Christian traditions, where they do the like the peace be with you, where people go around shaking hands. Um, but the the proper thing that is said, at least in the Church of Mew, is. Um, may Mew's blessings smile upon you, and that's what they will say to each other. Um, pe- everyone in the congregation seems very warm, very friendly. Um, do you partake in the communion, or whatever, the, what, what the equivalent of the communion is? Okay. Um, yeah, she's a, sure. she used to be a bit more of a fair practitioner of okay. most of the options of the legendaries. Sure. The, uh, the bread itself is not a wafer. It's not a Catholic wafer. It actually is actual bread that was cubed, cubed bread. And um, it actually is quite fluffy and sweet. Um, I Just out of character, I, I frequently went with a friend. My, we have a pastor friend, Colin. He, actually, the pastor um, was in his fraternity. And um, him and his wife were the ones who married the two of us, by the way. And um, we would often go to the church, they're Lutheran. We would often go to the Lutheran church. And I swear, the bread that they used for communion was so good. It was like pound cake. It was like sweet pound cake. And I'm like, man, I'm Catholic, but you know, I'm a little tempted to convert now just for this just for this bread. Um, so that's what I remember from that. And then the wine is, you know, your standard, um, it's your standard grape, whatever the equivalent of grape wine, and it is sweet as well. So um, you can partake in that. And then the eventually the ceremony will end. There'll be the processional. The sister will go out and she will shake everybody's hands as they go off, you know, to, to, to work the works of Mew. So... She'll um, grab one of the sisters um, gently and approach them and she'll go, um, I was wondering if it's possible to have a private um, consultation. Um, it's a paranormal matter which I need assistance with. That's okay. Of course, dear, of course. So I, I sort of picture this sister to be very similar to a, a very gentle softer version of Maggie Smith. So we're not, again, back in Sister Act, we're not talking the, we're not talking Maggie Smith the way she was in Sister Act 1, it's more Maggie Smith in Sister Act 2, where she was a little bit gentler, kinder, not as rough around the edges. So I can't do her accent very well, but I'm picturing her to have the Maggie Smith accent. What does she look like? Um, I would say that the woman is in her mid fifties, not super old, mid fifties, um, relatively small frame. We'll say that she's like five, six, or something along those lines. Um, hello, uh, sister. Um... Sister Chancinera. Chancinera. Yes, all of the sisters, you know, they, they tend to have names, their sister names tend to be based off of Pokemon. So Sister Chansey Nera is based obviously off of the Chansey. Um, and Chanseys are known to be benevolent Pokemon that try to heal and take care of, take care of other Pokemon. So Chansey Nera is actually a common, relatively common um, 
name that many of the sisters of Mew tend to have, sort of like how Sister Mary, it's like Sister Mary is very common um, yeah. in the Catholic Church, for example, or Sister Claire. Chancinera, oh, please, please, my, my child, what can I do for you? Um, well, my Pokemon recently went on an excursion to, um, uh, one more of a mission to help wreck a missing Pokemon. Unfortunately, encountered some type of um, glitch Pokemon which seemed to have possessed him, <laughs> as far as I can understand. Oh, by the graces of Mew, possession. Oh, I see. Well, may I may I see the Pokemon, please? Of course. Um, Remy, is that okay? Remy steps forward. Water. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. Uh, you said his name is Remy. Mm -hmm. Remy, pleased to meet you. My name is Sister Chancinera. Do you mind if I take a look at you, if you please? He walks forward slowly. He walks oh, forward slowly. And... She looks at you very warmly and Chancinera, like I said, she has this this motherly way about her. Um, she's very the way that she walks, the way that she moves, the way she talks. It's very nurturing. It's very soothing, um, as sisters tend to be. And uh, she looks at you very carefully, and um, she starts to do um, a little bit of a sign of Mew. You recognize this is the sign of Mew, almost like the sign of the cross, but it's a different. A shape entirely and then she starts to say a few words um, as you see in prayer with Mew and after I would say about I would say five minutes of that Remy you actually start to feel at peace somehow like all of the buzzing that was in your head the whispers that was going on your head it actually subsides Quite a bit. It doesn't go away completely, but whatever this woman is doing, praying to the gods, it seems to have some actual direct effects. And the whispers start to lower down a little, and you at least can now allow yourself to think straight for once. Um, and it's a very calm feeling. So for the rest of the session, I'm going to say, Remy, you're going to get a plus one bonus to all of your rolls. Um, because essentially what this woman has done is she's given you a blessing. blessing. Yes, so you get a plus one to all your rolls. So now, and you feel a lot calmer than before. Um, and then she will place her hands gently on your shoulders. And as soon as she, she places her hands on your shoulders, this, again, this warmth, um, this, this, it's almost like a very... Um, soothing burning sensation for you a burning sensation is very smoothing a very um, warm burning sensation is happening starting from your shoulders and like spreading trickling down towards your body rising up to your head to your face and it's like if you could be bathed like washed in fire that's how it feels like you're being washed in fire and then um when she's done her blessing, she carefully removes her soft hands from you. And then she, she will nod and says, Do you feel better, little one? He rubs up against her. She'll smile and she'll she'll rub up behind your ears. Uh, and then she will look over towards Noir. Noir, while this is happening, uh, while, while she's giving the blessing, you're going to look around and off there, there are little recesses in the temple where there are little sh like shrines that people can kneel down and pray in front of. And you catch a sight of a young lady praying at one of the shrines and you recognize this young lady as Dr. Pearl. I don't know if you do anything about that. She's currently in prayer, but you do notice that she's there. No, that's what later. <laughs> um, she'll 
um, go to uh, the sister, um, sister um, Chancenera. Yes, um, my child. Is he cured? Um, is there more that needs to be done? She, she says, I have definitely sensed a bit of ghost possession in him. Yes, you are right to bring him here. Uh, there is something very bizarre about this specific possession, though. It is unlike any other possession that I have witnessed in the past before. I have been able to do what I can to let the effects of your Pokémon subside temporarily. I don't know if this is um, at all possible, but um, my grandma used to tell me stories um, about... Um, actually, my name's like, my name's um, Noir Sinclair, uh, or Nausicaa Sinclair. But most people just call me Noir, but um, my name's like, um, Nausicaa was actually uh, a general during um, the time of war in Kalos. She was the one who was always a bit more interested in history, <laughs> family trees and stuff. Um, but um, they used to speak of her um, being able to um, being something of be able to control f flames themselves. Like it's very uh, a lot of mystery and stories. But there was um, a, it was more common then than it is now. I believe it used to be uh, a ritual that Pokemon and trainers used to do when. They decided to become Pokemon and trainers to um, represent their bond to each other, how that they will help each other survive and protect each other. And back then, occasionally when psychics or um, those with strange abilities would do such rituals with their Pokemon, some, some of these Pokemon pick, started picking up traits and the, some of the abilities of the trainer because if that link um, the, through their soul was um, passed on through them through the aura I've heard of yeah. such things, yes I actually majored in history when I was a young girl just like yourself she smiles <laughs> Would such a thing be possible? Uh, would this... She says, Honestly, I believe so. You're familiar with the teachings of Mew, yes? Um, yeah. Mew has always been a fascinating god. One of the only gods in existence that have the ability to use any known Pokemon ability. It is because of that Mew represents that anything can happen. Well, that's Remy, if you're interested would you like to try this ritual to see if it could help you he nods his head okay um do you know much about the ritual i only know a few things from my grandmother um i'm willing to pay um a donation to the temple of course that's very generous of you. I, I'm sure that uh, the temple would, would greatly appreciate whatever it is that you are able to do to support, to support us. Thank you. Uh, let me see if I can uh, come up with something for you, dear. Come, come with Thank me. Thank you. She will uh, take you by the uh, shoulder and gently walk down. You'll walk past Dr. Pearl, who is still praying. And um, 
She's going to uh, gather some of the other sisters and brothers and says, Sisters, brothers, sisters, brothers, we, we are in need. I am in need of something. There is a request for a ritual, uh, for a Pokemon in need. Um, we have a possession. Oh, possession. Yes, indeed. And I'm afraid it's a very, very powerful possession. I attempted to try to exercise the lost soul that was trapped inside this Pokemon. And unfortunately, there is, it is something that is preventing the extraction from happening. However, we have been able to mitigate the situation for the time being, and myself and the owner of said Pokemon thought that if we would help her with this ritual, it might help the Pokemon. At least make them a lot more comfortable. Um, the sisters and the brothers listen and they, they nod and they said, sure, we can help with this with this ritual. So out of character, mechanically, what does this ritual mean then? So, so what would this ritual um, do mechanically out of character? Collecting basically replaces one of the Pokemon's types and I was thinking of using it to replace the glitch typing. Kind of like expunge the and like push out the glitch Pokemon it's, and it's like kind of like seal it, push it out, fill it with something else, and like put like a little protector thing. You can't go back in here because this is there instead. Right. So it's almost like you're trapping it. If you want to look at it that way, you're trapping. You're 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 trapping it. No, not trapping. Encasing it. Encasing it with a psychic facade. I guess is the best way to put it. Like a, a little psychic barrier. Or a psychic barrier. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, that that makes perfect sense. And seeing how Mew is psychic as well makes perfect sense. So there's going to be a altar that is shrouded in again this pinkish salmon peach. Remy, you're going to be you're going to be uh, placed in the center and. Mother, uh, Sister Chensonera, she has some oils. She has some oils that have been warmed a bit. And she is going to start um, rubbing some of this oil first on your forehead. Um, and it actually gives your fur, conveniently, a nice sheen, a nice shiny sheen. Um, so the hair, like, glistens a bit. Um, and then she actually puts a little bit more of the oils and because the oils are warm again It feels almost like putting on some sort of a I guess if you were if you were for us if it was a hot day Then it's like spritzing water all, all over you, I guess. So she's sort of using the oils and then um, the uh, Sisters and brothers they join hands around in a circle and um, you can, uh, Noir, you can join hands on the opposite of Sister Chansonera in the circle. And the uh, um, sisters and brothers will start to sway back and forth and they'll start to chant. Um, and she, you will hear Chansonera say, Goddess Mew, we call to you today in order to help us with this afflicted Pokemon. We come here today to, to rescue not just one, but two afflicted s spirits. We would like for them to both be at peace. We would like for you to send down your energy, send down your power, fill us with your greatness, fill us with your goodness, allow us, help us, help him, help us, help them, help us to serve, so that once again this Pokemon can be at peace. We ask you, O oh great goddess Mew, to not just give us this power, but to give all creatures the power to be able to help each other and bring us from the darkness into the light. And the, the priests keep uh, chanting and chanting. And again, the um, 
voices keep receding and keep receding and keep receding. And then internally, Remy, there's a snap, almost like the sound of a Pokeball, almost like it sounds like a Pokeball closing, but that's not quite what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's silence. It's quiet. Everything is quiet. And um, the with that, the chanting stops, and uh, the uh, sisters and brothers they they stop holding hands, and uh, Sister Chansinera goes over to uh, to Noir and says, "I think that we have done all that we can. I think only time will now tell if it worked." Well. It's at least it's something. Um, here's a, a thousand Pokebox for the donation. Thank you so much. You're, You're very ready. welcome. Keep your faith in Mew and all of Mew's teachings. And I would believe that your Pokemon will be all right, that Remy will be all right. Yeah, Remy will, will ask to get picked up by Noir. We'll pick him up and go. Regardless of whatever happens, I will always love and protect you. I will always care for you. You are my family. Blood or not blood. And you you feel the word clean. Yes, you are. <laughs> Beautiful coat. On your way out, you will notice that Dr. Pearl is no longer there. Okay. So Molly, Molly will show up. She'll, um, she'll still be a bit, she'll still be a bit uh, weak. She'll still feel a bit weak, but she'll knock on the door and uh, wait for Tiffany. Yeah, as soon as you knock, door is open, pulls you into hug. <sighs> Are you Ben? Oh, you, you don't look good at all. <clears throat> Yeah, Molly. Molly is is uh, like she's her stomach has settled down, but she's definitely still feeling uh, just an overall sense, an overall feeling of not feeling well. So she'll just say, um, "I, uh, I'll be, I'll be all right, I guess." Um, uh, mm -hmm. Let's come okay, on. Shuts the door. Let's go to my bedroom. I'm gonna play dress up with you. I've already pulled some things. And so Molly will just, she'll just go in, she'll, she'll gaze around at the, at the outfits and, and uh, she'll say, I'm glad, I'm glad you're taking care of this because I have no idea. Oh, this is, all right. I'm probably the only one that's given everyone makeovers. <laughs> anyway, so first thing I thought was this, goes over, pulls it up. It's a green jumpsuit. I don't know how you feel about that. Molly takes it and she she says, uh, "Well, I guess green is my color." Um, oh, obviously. Actually, now she sees it. It's like just it closer to the face. <gasps> oh, that go try go now. So, Molly will step. Like, is there is there a partition or a yeah. bathroom or something? Yeah, she'll step behind it. She'll you'll hear her <laughs> undressing and then she'll say, uh, "How exactly do you put this on?" Oh, it's just like a romper. One leg, other leg, then just pull up and bring over shoulders. Oh, just like a prison suit. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> she, I thought <laughs> she, she, of that. <laughs> Although she, it's much more chic. And she she pulls it on. She she steps out. Well. <laughs> so cute. Okay, here's the thing. I originally bought this for me but it looks so ridiculously trashy on me because different body proportions. Like if I sit down in that, I would rip out the sides and I can barely get over my chest. On you though, she starts walking around Molly. This is so not fair. It makes your legs look a million miles long and oh my God, your ass, seriously. <laughs> oh, uh, it Mo is Molly. terrific. Molly's Molly's blushing like uh, come on can't, here can't drags her over to cupboard, <laughs> opens up door. Yeah, like he'll he'll come up and he'll greet him and he'll say, "Flying friend, hi." Hey, uh, 
Do you mind if I ask you something? Uh, okay. Uh, you you just did, right? <laughs> I guess I did. Was that it? No, no, no. I have a, I have another question. Um, do you mind if I ask you three things? Oh, okay, okay. What's the first one? Oh well, it was the question I had before, and then oh, the second one oh. was asking if I could ask more. Um, so this is the third one. This is the important one. Um, okay. <laughs> Has Tiffany been, uh, has she been acting weird lately at all? <laughs> and he, he looks, he looks at Tiffany. They're probably in the room just playing and <laughs> playing with dresses and stuff. And, and who looks at her and he looks, looks at Bullet and he says, uh, no, uh, this is what they, this is what she normally does. Sometimes, sometimes she puts outfits on me and then I also want to try things and, no, no, this is normal. Hmm. Okay. This Molly's been kind of acting weird. Really? What do you mean weird? Yeah, like, like she seems, she seems sad a lot. Oh, uh, really? And Ooh will kind of slip into the into the room and take a peek. And uh, I think at, this is the point when Molly is just sitting and watching watching Tiffany gather more accessories and mm. he will peek in, he'll look at her and he'll say, I don't know, uh, she, she's, oh. And he looks at her eyes and he says, oh, her, her, yeah, her eyes are a little puffy, aren't they? Yeah. Hmm. Do you did know you, why? Did you hear what happened to her trainers? Yeah, I heard they're in a bad place. And you know what? Uh, Tiffany actually showed me a, showed me a video about the bad place and it's it's really scary flying friend but we could do it right i mean we went into the pc yeah and we we got orange friend and and uh well oh have you seen pretty friend not recently why oh, i just i just hope he's okay after the glitch friends did something to him Oh, he'll be okay. I mean, it's Remy we're talking about. Remy's always okay. Yeah, pretty friend. He'll be fine. Like, he's determined. He says, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah, I I just want to see Molly happy again. I mean, she's she seems happy right now, but how long will it take until that goes away again, you know? Hmm. Maybe, maybe when we save her trainers that'll be that'll be when she'll be happy again yeah i hope so i'm gonna I do mean, the best I, that i can i would i would feel very sad if i lost tiffany mm -hmm. would you go into johto for her of course i would do anything for tiffany <laughs> i mean we went into a we went into a pc and we fought glitch friends but i don't know if i, I only... call them friends really Oh, uh, mm, gl glitch not friends then. Yeah, yeah, glitch not friends. That one works. And, and they're only not friends because pretty friend was not a friend, and Ooh is starting to get confused <laughs> in his own head. So, pretty friend was not a friend, and and um, and, and then he was pretty not friend to them, but they were still almost friends. <laughs> right, because we were being friends. And so they were almost friends, but then uh, Remy, a pretty friend. And then they were not friends. Uh, and then I turned him into purple friend, and then we got away. You did turn him into purple friend. When did glitch friend... When did the glitch thing get with Remy? Uh, when we were leaving, when we were leaving the PC. I think uh, I, I saw something, but then he told us not to say anything. So I, well, he told me not to say anything. So pretty friend said, said, no, 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 everything's fine. I don't know why he tried to hide it. Well, maybe everything will be okay. Like we said before, it is Remy. Yeah, it is pretty friend. <laughs> he, pretty friend is always in charge, right? He'll be fine. Right. By the way, um, mm. can I ask two more questions? Oh, was that one of them? That was. 
Okay. What's okay. the second one? Um, I don't mean to be rude or anything. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Why don't you ever, you know, call us by our names? And you, you looks looks up at him, and he and he says, "I I don't know what you mean." Well, I mean, you know, I'm bullet, and I'll straighten up a little bit. You know, Remy is pretty friend, and or purple friend, I guess, depending on the time. That sort of thing. He says, he, he looks at Bullet and it, it looks like he's trying to say Bullet's name, but he just says, Flying Fan. Yeah. Oh, well, that was, that was, no, that was the same thing. That was the same thing. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, say, say your name again. Bullet. Bull. Bull. Bullet. 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 Uh, uh, how about bullet friend? Bullet friend. Bullet friend. That was really good. Flying. Flying friend. Flying bullet friend. Flying, oh, that's, yeah, you know what, we'll compromise. That was good. <laughs> Maybe we can work on this later. And he says, Wow, that, that, that was weird, flying, 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 flying friend. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> but let's get in here and tell your trainer how hot she is. <laughs> Seriously, boys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, Molly. Then we'll come in. Go ahead. Yeah, Molly. Molly is like she. She kind of awkwardly turns and she's looking and she. She's like, uh, no one's ever complimented my ass before. Um, <sighs> I guess. I guess it looks good. She never and once got that in prison. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I would think that she would have, but maybe she just like. Maybe not. Oh, openly. maybe she was like, oh, that wasn't directed at me. That was directed at somebody else. She maybe. tuned everything out. Just like, I'm, I'm sure they were talking about about Madison, whoever next to me. <laughs> so she's like, wow. Um, uh, th thanks for the compliment. Uh, I. I don't know. Uh, I guess I, if if you say I look good, then I guess I do. <sighs> Sweetie, <clears throat> hugs her. You are awesome. You need to start having this mantra in your head. I am awesome. <clears throat> I am the best damn thing. Okay. <laughs> Molly, Molly, she she smiles and she looks down and she's she says. I trust me. I've I've been I've tried before, and she she looks at herself and she says, "I don't know. With everything going on, doesn't this all feel a little, I don't know, inappropriate?" A little, but at the same time, you need normalcy. You need one day where everything is not on fire or burning down around you. You need to laugh, you need to have fun. You need to remember there's stuff worth fighting for. Molly, Molly nods a little bit and she asks Tiffany, can I ask you, can I ask you when you've, when was the time when you felt at the end of your rope? Do all of my 10 years count? Cause I was pretty much absorbed with self loathing and hatred mm -hmm. and I pretty much turned that on everything and one around me. Yeah. I didn't really have close friends for a very long time for a reason. One thing one thing I learned about being at the end of your rope is you have two two big options. Either 
tie that rope into a noose and just finish it or tie it into a knot and hang on for your life. Hopefully you're still choosing hanging on. Molly looks at Tiffany with a very, very pointed look and she says, option one didn't work for me. And um, okay. okay then, pulls her into another hug. Okay, now, okay, if we're going with this, or you do you want to see some other options? Because I do have some really great accessories that would look so cute with this. Um, well, uh, like I said, I don't know anything, so just work your magic. Oh, but I want to give you something that makes you feel and look fantastic. Like, you have no choice but to strut. Like, I have you on most days. Well, oh, goodness. <laughs> it's just been a long time in between. Yeah, and so she'll she'll say, "All right, just do your thing. I'll I'll wait." Okay, let's see. It goes over to other oh, up toward where pillows are on bed. Okay, oh, the skinny jeans might not fit you. They're a pair that shrank that were mine. So okay, those. How do you feel about lace? Ma Molly Molly says, "Excuse me." You know. Lace, really? Oh, oh, oh that, 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 that kind of lay. Sorry. Um, um, <laughs> L-A-C-E. Not, uh, not that you're not lovely, but um, <laughs> Kyle, you know? And uh, Molly, Molly looks at her and chuckles and says, uh, Pearl, you know, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Hands over a sandish, topish color top. It's Laced from the neck down to a sweetheart neckline, then just into a simple tank. <clears throat> In case you want it separates instead of, you know, having to take the whole thing off to go to the bathroom. Because if you're not used to jumpsuits, that can be awkward. And I should really stop bringing that word up. <gasps> <laughs> so, uh, well, I guess we can try a couple things. Um, okay. Just let me know. Let me know what, look, what looks best. All right. <laughs> shoves things at Molly, shoves Molly toward partition. <laughs> yeah, she'll try them on. And uh, <clears throat> she'll come out kind of, kind of, well. <laughs> Noir was right about the bear tech color on you. It is perfect. You look glowing. Okay, the jeans, well, like I said, they were originally mine, but shrank. They don't really fit as well as they should. We'd have to go shopping for a pair that's actually in your size. But the top is really good. You're keeping the top and oh. the jumpsuit. Oh. Um, regardless of whatever we end up picking. Well, thanks a lot. Um, it's been a while since I had new clothes. Well, to be <laughs> fair, a lot of these things come from, I will buy bolt, not bolt, bulk fabric lots on eBay because I'm looking for cheap materials to make Pokemon costumes with and... So it's I'll get stuff and sometimes like, oh wait, I can repurpose this for me or this is too pretty to cut up, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for, which is where a lot of this has come from. Hmm. Well, um So it's literally stuff I had laying around. Plus, um she officially looks away then back. I feel really bad about just running off at the mansion, just dumping on Cassandra and chasing Chase. That oh. was very nice of me. Uh, no, it, no, don't don't worry about that. It, uh, Cassie, Cassie uh, helped me a lot, and you helped me get out of there, and you're helping me now. And yeah, but it was a shitty thing to do, mm -hmm. and I do feel bad. Give me a broken bone, a shoulder blade that's been knocked out of place, cracked ribs. I got it. Broken horn, someone crying. <laughs> I, I, I get it go right there. <clears throat> you know? Molly will nod and um I think uh just for just for time's sake, I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that Molly will tell Tiffany the story that she told Cassie. The stories that she told Cassie. About yeah. the polywhirl and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Polywhirl and the Mykina and all that. You are getting all the hugs. <laughs> <laughs> he is practically in your lap by the end. Ooh. Oh my, Whoa. that's so sad. 
grabs Kleenex Poe's nose. Mm. Okay. okay. That that is enough crying. Okay. You need to call your doctor. You need to set a date. I need to call my cop. I need to set my date. Let us do this. Yes. All right, then. <laughs> and uh, so, so I guess they'll set the date for the next day, like lunchtime? Sure. We'll check with Kyle, see if he is available. Mm -hmm. After, so Tifali, Tifali gets their moment. OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, she won't send a text. She'll make a very quick phone call. Molly will, sure. not Molly, Tiffany will leave her bedroom, shut door. <clears throat> yeah. So she's going to call Dr. Pearl. She'll, <laughs> she'll pick up the phone. Hey, Molly, is that you? Uh, hi. Hi, Dr. Pearl. Yeah. Um, I, uh, well, I'm back in Kanto and uh, wanted to know if you're open to get that coffee maybe tomorrow around lunchtime, maybe. Oh, wow. Sure, that sounds great. I can't wait to hear all about your trip. <laughs> Molly, yeah, Molly does the exact same thing. Like she kind of, oh God, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> something in my throat. <coughs> um, <clears> throat> Where so, were you thinking? Um, out of character, uh, maybe, maybe Noir's Cafe or... If there's another cafe that anyone knows about. Yeah, I think that's what we talked about originally. Because, you know, Noir's going to make the special coffee. Sure. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she'll, she'll, uh, tell, she'll tell Dr. Pearl the name of the coffee place and the location of it. Oh, yes, I know that place. I'm actually, that's actually very convenient. I'm in town there in Saffron City. Mm -hmm. And Molly says, yeah, so how, how have you been? Hello? I've been doing just fine. Uh, been, I guess, the only thing new with me is I, uh, I uh, just heard from my brother a few, a couple days ago. He seems to be doing fine. That's good to hear. Um. Well, I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm feeling a little rough. Uh, oh no! I'm wondering. What's wrong? Uh, today. Today, I, I don't know, I've been feeling really anxious, and uh, I think it's actually having a bad effect on my stomach. Uh, I was wondering if you have any recommendations for that. Oh, well, can I at least ask where the anxieties, what, what the source of this anxiety is first? <clears throat> Molly will sit down, and she'll give a long sigh, and she'll say, uh... Um, well, it's kind of a long story. Um, you have time? Um, I have time now. I have time tomorrow for lunch, whatever you prefer. Uh, I don't know if it's the best lunch conversation. Um, well, why don't you tell me now then? Well, um, the, the short story, Dr. Pearl, is, um, I... I found out that my foster parents, um, well, they, they might be in Johto. Uh, 